Ladies and gentlemen, boys and uh, welcome to episode 169, LOL, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Can't wait for episode 420, because that's the only time that the episode number is going to be funny again. Oh no, we'll still have 269, LOL, and then 369, XD, and then we'll have 420, and then it'll only be 30 weeks until, 39 weeks until... Wait, 49 weeks until 469. Ah, fucking lit. Um, I'm Lewis Spears. I'm your host. And I'm letting you guys know that my tour, No Slide Season, is on sale right now. LewisSpears.com slash gigs is where you get your tickets. Melbourne, the first night, is almost sold out. There are less than 100 tickets now. I told you they're going quick. Uh, It'll probably be close to about 50 seats left. So fucking book them. If you're in Melbourne, come to that first show. I want to sell it out. And then I can post it on Instagram and be like, hey, man, we're selling out already. So if you want to help me out, uh, actually, if you want to come at all, fucking book tickets now because they are going nuts. And I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who has. Right. Brisbane's going crazy too. And hey, dude, big news, man. Biggest news of my life. I've sold more than one ticket to Gimpy. I think I've sold six. So looks like Gimpy's going to be on, man. Uh, no, for real. I, I appreciate everyone booking tickets this far in advance. It's very, very cool. Um, I had a very, very busy week this week, man. I uh, chucked out bi-monthly ball. Luke and Lewis is going really well. Got a speared Sundays out on time. Filmed a couple of terrible TVs with Elliot Loney, which I've been trying to get done for ages too. So it's been very good. Um, I'm currently wearing a matching tracksuit and some white Reebok trainers. So I think I look like a pedophile from the 90s, you know. Chuck on my dad jeans and... Get you alone without your dad. <laughs> Speaking of pedophiles, you hear that Jeffrey Epstein shit? That multi-billionaire that's friends with, like, the Illuminati, essentially? Man, you think that all these conspiracy theorists are, like, crazy and insane, but then the news comes out, like, the actual news, and you realize that the conspiracy theorists, yeah, they are all crazy, but they kind of got the vibe right. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, oh, there's bloody pedophiles underneath a pizza shop and they're all billionaires and they run the country and fuck kids. And then you're like, yeah, you're pretty crazy. The pizza shop stuff isn't real because the pizza place didn't have a basement. None of the politicians went there. So you guys are crazy. But then like 18 months later, a multi-billionaire Jeffrey Epstein gets arrested for the second time for child sex trafficking. Turns out he's got his own island. And on the island, this is true, they found a door that only opens from the outside. What do you reckon that one's for? That's fucking true. Look it up. They found a door that only opens from the outside, i.e. a prison, a fucking rape dungeon. And guess who's been on the island? Guess who's been on Jeffrey Epstein's private jets? Donald Trump's been there. Bill Clinton's been there. Hey, and we all know Bill loves a good root. Hey, can't believe Hillary Clinton's still with him. Although she, she's a war criminal, if you believe Twitter. All those fucking conservative cunts who make yelling rant videos in cars. Dude, how funny are those videos, man? Those like... Like those fucking... Anyone who makes a rant video in a car is so funny because they're all the same, no matter like what... They, no matter what they believe in, they're all the same. It's like some middle-aged person with an iPhone 6 and they just set it up in their car and they have like the most passionate rant they've ever had in their life. They all get 3 million views. Everyone goes, oh my God, you're so correct. This is an injustice, right? The three most common categories of those, you got your conservative guys and they're generally ex-military, Right. So they're, they're out of the military. They've run out of shit to yell at. They can't kill anybody in the street. So what, the, what do they do? They, they get in their giant six-wheeler and they just yell at their phone about how good America is and how ungrateful everyone is. This is America. If you don't like it, leave. We got guns. We got freedom of speech. And we fucking hate anyone who doesn't look like us. America. You got those ones, right? They always go nuts. Patriotism. You have to share it. You know, if a veteran makes a video, you have to share it. Otherwise, you're spitting on the flag. That seems to be the vibe there. You know, you got those ones. And they're always wearing a Make America Great Again hat. And they're like, I don't care if you don't like it. I'm going to wear this shit. Right? That's probably the most popular type 
of of car rant, the conservative car rant, second most popular, right? This is the angry parent rant, right? So these are parents of bullied children, parents of disabled children, parents of uh, uh, parents who have seen other children misbehaving and they were too much of a pussy to say something so they, they decide to pull out their iPhone 6 and yell at the lens instead. I saw this kid shoplifting and I did fucking nothing except for yell at my iPhone 6. Share this to stop bad parents. They get fucking 20,000 shares. Or, you know, they'll be yelling about their son getting bullied. My son was getting bullied by three older boys. And I told the teachers and they did nothing about it. So I told the principal, they did nothing about it. So what did I do? I got my baseball bat out of the back of my ute and I beat the fuck out of three nine-year-olds at the same time. And people are trying to tell me that I'm a bad parent? No. Like and share if you think beating the fuck out of other people's kids with a baseball bat because they called your son a nerd is okay. 20,000 shares, I'd share it. Just because they're beating up kids. I don't give a fuck why. <laughs> And then the other one. What's the other one? Oh, the other one is is it's very similar to the conservative one. It's like the uh, the blonde nine out of ten that hates immigration. <laughs> like that's that's the other one, right? It'll be like the, the like the prettiest woman you've ever seen in your life, and then she just starts screaming about how immigrants aren't grateful for this great nation. Which, you know, I guess you could make the argument, but the point is the only reason people are sharing that is because they're the hottest person they've ever seen that agrees with them. This is America, and we like guns, we, we, we have strong borders, and also look at my titties, America. You know, some, what was that chick? Fucking Tommy, Tommy Loren, she did that shit. There's another one, Faith Goldie, Lauren Southern. All these fucking beautiful conservative women that are like, I agree with virgins. And all the virgins are like, oh my God, fucking marry me. <laughs> it's definitely a category of car rant. That'll definitely go viral on Facebook. What's another one? Oh, then another one is the, the vegan one goes well as well, you know. This is what McDonald's is selling. A double bacon beef burger? So you're telling me that two different animals had to die just so you could eat something after Friday night? And everyone else is like, yep. No shares. <laughs> but then there's like, then there's the car rant where it's so clear that there's this one guy who it's so clear that he did one car rant, his first one, and it was so passionate and, and, and it was like a legitimate issue and everyone shared it and it went crazy fucking viral and he became famous off that one rant. And then he just went, I think this is a business. And then all he does is car rants. He just fucking pulls up in the Walmart car park, just screams at his phone, scares the fuck out of all the young families that are just trying to buy breakfast cereal. And he's in his car, like screaming like, this is America. And if you don't like it, you <laughs> I'll do that again. This is America. You know, doing retakes and shit, pretending that it's some passionate rant when really it's take number five. <laughs> I love those guys. Um, don't know if you guys can tell, but I've done fuck all this week. <laughs> I haven't done anything. What, have I, what did I do last week? Oh, dude, I read... I know I talked about it on Luke and Lewis, but hey, man, if you're going to listen to three hours of me, sometimes you're going to catch a boomerang, right? This shit comes back. I read the most boring fucking story by Stephen King. And don't worry, I'm not going to spoil it because it's one of his short stories. I had this dumb as fuck comment going, Ugh, why are they spoiling Stephen King books? It's like, dude, it's a 30-page short story about Sand being the villain. Like Stephen King wrote this whole book where he made Sand the villain. They landed on this planet and then and then this, this guy got like mind controlled by Sand. Not a Sand monster, you know. Spider-Man has a villain called Sand Man. You know, he's a Sand Man. That's a good villain because he's a Sand Man. Imagine if Sand Man was just Sand Sand. Ooh, look out for Sand. What's his superpower? Ooh, it's sand. Yeah? What's there to be afraid of, Stephen King? Look out for sand. It's chafy. It'll chafe ya. Ooh, sand. It's like, bro, just don't write that story. 
You know, that'd be like if I was like, oh, what's funny about sand? And I just talked about it on a podcast for 20 minutes. <laughs> Maybe just don't do that. For fuck's sake, bro. Reading this story. And, I, and you know when you're reading a book, but you get like halfway through it and you're like, I can't, I've put so much effort into this shit. I have to finish it just to find out what happened. You know what you should do in future? Just Wikipedia that shit, bro. That's what I keep telling myself. But there's been so many books I've read and they've been shitty halfway through and I'm like oh it'll get better again it'll get better and they never do and you always hate yourself I could be reading something else my grandma just stops reading the book that's crazy she reads so many books she's I'm like what happens when you read a bad book she goes I just stop reading it I'm like how the fuck do you do that she doesn't even know what Wikipedia is she's just like oh I guess I'll never find out what happens that's crazy I wouldn't I would never walk out of a movie cinema halfway through a bad movie because i even as bad as it is i need closure i need to find out what happens i'll just be sitting there praying for the main character to die of polio or something interesting like please make this cunt die can't remember the last horrible movie i saw i watched something oh, jazz always makes me watch fucking weird indie movies oh i did watch a bad one yeah, recently we saw this shit house one. It was like, um, oh, it was like one of those adventure, like you know those night gone wrong movies that just keep coming out. Like The Hangover happened, and then like, oh, let's just do that again, but with different characters. Oh, everything was going well until we accidentally took drugs. Until we took a wrong turn. Until this guy showed up. You know those fucking movies? They keep remaking them. Hangover was great. Hangover 2 was great. Hangover 3 was almost great, right? But that's it. That's all the fucking Night Gone Wrong movies the world needs. They keep remaking them with different characters. We saw this one. It was about chicks. What was it called? It was like... Um oh, it was called Book Smart. That's right. And it was about these two girls in high school in L.A., Right, Any movie that's set in LA is made by the most insufferable LA cunts ever. And they think LA is a normal place where everybody else... like they, th they, they lived in LA for like two years and they forgot what the real world is like. I went to LA, right? They had a clothing store that had uh, no gen non-gendered clothing, right? So they had skirts next to t-shirts. Hey, move them somewhere else. There's a reason why it's gendered and that's so you don't look at the fucking t-shirt section and then stumble across a fucking g-string and get confused and angry that's why it just makes it easier to coordinate and browse the store i went in there i thought oh you know i could probably find something something you know effeminate and flashy you know that's what i like i love i love uh fucking in my comedy special i wore a woman's belt and i looked amazing i love that shit but also you can't just like be like oh we don't sell gendered clothing and then just put it all in a pile on the floor fucking have a look what, boots next to blouses? What are you doing? Order that shit. What am I saying? Oh, LA's not a normal place. That's what I'm saying. But there are so many movies, right, where that are about LA and you can tell that the writers haven't left LA for like fucking 10 years and they think that LA is what planet Earth is because LA is just basically just Twitter in real life. Everyone's a fucking Instagram model walking around vegan thinking that straws are destroying the planet when really it's just intersectionality. <laughs> um, that was a joke. But yeah, so this, this movie called Booksmart came out and it was about, it was like a, it was like the hangover, but there were two female high school students and they're like, oh my God, we studied really hard in school and we never partied. And now uh, we're getting into Harvard, but all of the people who did party, they're also getting into good universities. So we need a party now, otherwise we never will have had a party. And then they go and they try and get to a party and they, everything goes wrong and they end up at the wrong party and then they accidentally take drugs. And then this happens and the police get involved. It's like those fucking... How many more of those movies do we need? Oh, no! We have to get here, but things keep going wrong! And it's just like a shitty re-edit of the fucking hangover, but they replace the characters and make, them make it not funny. Anyway, my girlfriend loved it. I hated it. I wish I could have walked out. It was so shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> um... What am I yelling about? Oh, yeah, that sand fucking book. 
you know what happened at the end of that sand book? Right, where sand was the bad guy. They ended up escaping the sand planet and then the guy that got stuck there who didn't want to leave just ate sand until he died. Cool, Stephen King. Bin it. <laughs> Don't publish that, for fuck's sake. What else have I been doing? I finally got um I finally got my uh, I bought Belle's bathwater right I finally got it and it's it like it's arrived I don't know what to do with it because she got deleted from Instagram of course right not only did it take fucking four weeks to ship to my house from England so now by the time I get the bathwater it's not trendy but now she's been wiped from the face of the planet so now I don't know what to do with it I guess I'll just drink it by myself without filming it. <laughs> I'll probably do something with it when she comes back because she'll, she'll do some fucking meme thing. Like, I'm back. I'm dressed up as a nine-year-old. Oh, yeah, that Jeffrey Epstein shit. That's what I was talking about. So there's billionaire, right? Billionaire sex trafficker. The first time he got convicted. I don't know the exact facts, but, you know, like conspiracy theorists, I got the vibe right. I, I looked it all up. Um, so first time he got arrested... Uh, for, for child sex trafficking. He was found guilty of it, proven that he did it. He got something like a tiny amount of jail time. Like he got off super lightly. He got parole incredibly early. Like clearly corrupt, fucked judicial system shit. Got off because he was a billionaire, probably was connected to hell and back. And then he got off scot-free, essentially, right? In, like in, in the scheme of things, for being a child sex trafficker, he did hardly any time because he was a famous billionaire, right? Anyway, it finally caught up to him and he got charged again. And he's been, I think... I don't know if he's been found guilty yet, but it's very, very obvious. They've raided his fucking pedophile island. He has his own jet that was known as, as the Lolita Express. Like, very clearly public pedophile. And friends were like so many powerful people. Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, movie stars, this and that. Other billionaires. Some prince from one of those weird European countries that still have kings and queens for some reason. And obviously also have pedophile princes. Anyway, so he's in custody at the moment, right? And I just read that he, uh, <laughs> the news has come out with, oh, Jeffrey Epstein narrowly survives suicide attempt or assault. We don't know. Gee, I wonder which one that was, right? Jeffrey Epstein, a man who's never been suicidal in his life, a man that went to prison for the first time for child sex trafficking and never tried to kill himself for that. But mysteriously, now that the investigators are serious about it and looking into who he was friends with, royalty, politicians, and the Illuminati, turns out now, miraculously, he's suicidal in his fucking 70s. Gee, that's a quick turnaround. I didn't know you could kill yourself with two bullets to the back of your head, but apparently you can. This is that kind of shit that makes you... This is the conspiracy episode of the Speared Sunnies podcast. You thought it was going to be all funny 6 9 and 4 20 jokes, but nah, we're going full Alex Jones tinfoil hat on this shit. I don't know, man. That's, that's always what I think when I see all those InfoWars things and the Alex Jones stuff. I'm like, yeah, dude, he's definitely insane and the guy's absolutely crazy, but he's also onto something, you know? The chemicals are turning the freaking frogs gay. It's like, no, they weren't turning them gay, but there were definitely chemicals in the water. That's a bit fucked. Don't want that happening. I feel like you should take whatever Alex Jones says, believe 1% of it. That's what I say. He's like 1% correct. 5% of the time, he's got something. I mean, he was definitely right about the media trying to censor him. Look at him now. You can't. Because if you even talk about him on Twitter, you'll get deleted. Or YouTube. It's crazy shit, man. But anyway, guys, make sure you follow uh, Luke and Lewis on fucking... <laughs> oh, man. I've had the... I've had, I'm sorry. I've had the, uh, the busiest fucking week. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Here we go. Uh, boys and girls are so different, man. Like, so unbelievably different to each other. You know? How that's not obvious to people, I don't understand. They're so fucking different. I'm talking like young kids. They're so different in the brain. I was in a sushi shop and there was this young mum. She was like 30 something. and She had two kids, 
same age, boy and a girl. They looked like maybe six, five or six, right? So they're talking and walking, but they're not like human yet. You know what I mean? They're not like a full human. They've got their personality showing. They've got their personality hanging out. They don't know how to keep it in. You know that? When they have no sensor, they just do whatever their brain tells you to do. Oh, I should throw my toy through a window. Why? Don't know. I'm five. That shit. In his sushi shop, this mum's just trying to eat her dinner. The kids are running around being kids and she's like, please, I haven't slept for nine days. I'm absolutely fucked. I'm a working mum. Capitalism has forced me to work and raise you. My life sucks. I'm a fucking call center worker and now I've got to come home and deal with you two cunts while I eat sushi. I'm dying. Your father doesn't help at all. I'm exhausted. You know, those chicks help. <laughs> you just see these young mums with these kids running around and you make brief eye contact with them and the only thing their eyes scream is just help. I haven't slept for days. Help. That chick, right? She had that look. Good on her. Shout out to all you hardworking mums out there. So she's trying to eat her dinner. The kids are doing what they're doing, right? And the boy, this is how so different boys and girls are, right? The boy is running around the sushi shop. It's just me and the mum and the kids. It's quiet. But the boy's running around being a fucking menace going, Woo! Yee-hoo! yee Woo! And she's like, stop it! Stop it! And then the boy runs to the bathroom with his sister to take her to the bathroom. So they go into the bathroom and then... They finish up and they come out and the boy runs and he runs into three chairs, like not one, three, like really fast, smashes into three chairs, bang, drags them across the floor in the fucking super, in the sushi shop. The staff are so offended, so angry. The mum's just like, please stop it. Stop running. Stop. And he's like, woohoo, bashing into shit, knocking over chairs. And she's like, stop. You can't be running. You need to stop running. And while she's scolding the kid, the girl comes around and she's like, I'm a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly, just coming by, just, just singing like that shit. And then the mother just bursts into laughter at just how uncontrollable her son is and how beautifully, like, well-behaved her daughter is. A butterfly just coming by. I was pissing myself. This kid was just running into chairs, bashing his skull into table edges, being a fucking wrecking, wrecking ball. And then, and then his sister, who's been raised by the same parents in the same environment, because she's a girl, is going, a butterfly, a coming by. Amazing, man. How do you see that shit and be like, oh, gender doesn't exist? <laughs> it's a social construct. Meanwhile, toddlers are running their heads into chairs at light speed while girls are just dancing, going, a butterfly, <laughs> gender exists. <laughs> but that's cultural Marxism. They're trying to take over the world. According to Alex Jones, anyway. So this is another, uh, uh, this is another, this is another reason, right? Why, why men and women are so different and everybody knows it, right? I was, on, I was on the bus because my life sucks and I'm at a low point. I was on a bus, right, going home. Night time. So what, I was working late here. It would have been like 9 or 10 p.m. And I'm taking the bus home because I've fucked my entire life by not getting my license by 25. And now no one has time to teach me because I've fucked it. I'm not going to get it till I'm 50. Anyway, so I'm sitting on the bus. My life sucks. And there's this, there's this uh, kid, like s dad and a small girl. Again, five years old, and she's like laughing. Woo, I'm on a bus. This is sick. And I'm like, you don't know how shit this is, man. This is this is a low point. Why can't I be like this chick when every time I see a bus, I'm like, woo, it's got big wheels. That'd be awesome. I would never get my license. I would never ever in my, I mean, I, I'm not going to, but I would actually never get my license. I mean, it's never going to happen, but I would never do it. It's not like it's going to happen, but I wouldn't do it. But if I was excited about the bus, it wouldn't happen, even though it's not going to, right? If, every time I saw a bus or a train, I was like a five-year-old and I was like, woo, we're going to take the train. This is sick. My life would be awesome, but it's not. It sucks because I take the bus at 10 p.m. at night as I fucked it. Anyway, so it's this kid and a dad are on the bus. And the kid's real talkative. And then this old woman gets on the bus, might be like 
50, 60 years old. So not, not old, but like older. She gets on the bus and she sits down next to the family. Could have sat anywhere else, right? It's an empty bus, okay? This is how different men and women are. I couldn't do any, any of this shit, right? If you're a man listening to this, I'm going to list off all the things she did and you're going to go in your head, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. That would have got me arrested. I, that would have got me punched, right? Done all this to a stranger that she doesn't know and their five-year-old, right? And women are probably listening to this and going, why? What's wrong with that? I do that all the time. I love talking to strangers' children. That's totally fine. And hey, it is totally fine when ladies do it, but when we do it, we get arrested. This woman gets up on the bus. She must be 50 years old. The young girl who she doesn't know is just talking to her dad, talking about how the, the how cool the bus is. It's got big wheels. Woohoo! The door's open. Oh, fucking awesome. I'm going to love this till I'm 25. No, you won't. Then the woman gets on, sits way too close to them, right? I wouldn't have done that. Can't do that. That's creepy if I do that. And then she sits down. She goes, hello, how are you going? This woman's by herself, talking to the five-year-old, doesn't even address the father. And right away, if I did that, if, if I had a kid and a 50-year-old man did that to my daughter, I'd be reaching around looking for my mace. I'd be like, oh, my child's going to get abducted because a strange man has not talked to me and gone straight for my kid. She's like, oh, hello. How are you? Are you having a good night? Are you having fun on the bus? And the girl, like all five-year-olds, is like, oh, my God, a stranger. I can't talk to them. They're fucking scary. What if, where's my mace? <laughs> Doesn't say anything, right? I'm just watching this going, dude, I could never do that. Not that I want to. You know, I'm not like, oh, fuck, I wish I could have a conversation with a five-year-old I've never met. That'd be awesome. I'm watching this shit happen and then um, the little girl doesn't say anything and then the woman's like, oh, what's the matter? Am I scaring you? Dude, if a man said that to a fucking child, straight away, triple zero, I'm calling it as a bystander. I'm not even the father. If I saw that shit, I'd be like, pedophiles on the bus. We're on the pedo express right now. Jeffrey Epstein's taking control of the bus. We're going straight to his island, obviously. Am I scaring you? Are you scared of me? Why don't you want to talk to me? What's wrong with me? Starts doing that shit. I'm like, dude. And the father is totally okay with it. Why? Because she has a pussy. That's why. You don't know what she could be into. She could be one of those fucking weird high school teachers that fucks one of the kids. And for some reason, everyone's like, wish that happened to me in high school. I wish I had a sexually traumatic event with an older woman. Who violated me without my consent? (laughs) That would have been cool. Sign me up for that math class. Fuck. I think we should move away from the fucking pedophile talk, shall we? That's about 30 minutes of it. (laughs) Man, how English is that Beatles movie that's coming out? How English is that shit? That movie where it's like, dude, they're so running out of ideas for movies. Oh, what would happen if nobody remembered the Beatles? Hey, what would happen if no one remembered the Beatles? And then one guy remembered the Beatles and he sung all their songs and become famous. What would happen if that would happen? Here's what would happen, right? If we reached to 2019 and the Beatles never existed but I remembered all of the Beatles songs and how, how to play them. And I knew them all word for word. And I was an incredible singer, guitar player, drum. I could do it all, right? I was a one-man Beatles band and I had all of their hits backed up in my mind. And I went out and I recorded them. And then I put them out on SoundCloud in 2019. Here's what would happen. I would get one comment on the third upload and it would say, You suck, mate. Do some rap music. Boo. Do you really think if people listen to Beatles music today that they would like it? Nah. I don't think so. Let's face facts, man. Wouldn't wouldn't happen, right? Because you would have all of the music that the Beatles inspired without any of the Beatles music. So you would just come out with fucking weird British pop about walruses cuckoo kachoo yellow submarine that shit you reckon cuckoo kachoo would get on the radio in 2019 no maybe it was cuckoo kaguchi gang maybe but no 
Who the fuck, what kind of boring person would see, oh man, what would happen if the Beatles didn't exist? Here's what would happen. You would get three comments going, stop uploading these shit songs. They don't make any sense. No one wants to listen to a song about yellow submarines, bro. The hippie era is over. Who the fuck would see that movie, man? How British is that shit? Only like the most British man of all time would see that shit. I say, shall we go to the movies? What are we going to see? Well, I was—I saw their new. I saw a new promotion. He doesn't call them ads. He calls them promotions. I saw a new promotion for the new Beatles movie. Well, it's a movie. About, it's not, not. Well, it's not about the Beatles. It's about what if everybody forgot the Beatles except for one man, and then he he did a bunch of Beatles songs and became world famous for the Beatles songs. What would happen? That seems like a riveting ta- tale, doesn't it? Tally ho, pip pip. You, <laughs> what what? Shelby's got a monocle and a mustache and a horse. He said, shall we take the carriage down to the cinema, darling? And she doesn't talk because she's not allowed to. Ah, very good. That was a test. If, if you dare spoke up in response, I would have struck you down. Sally, his wife's called Sally. Right, shall we take the horse and carriage down to the cinema? I hope it's not one of those mixed race cinemas. I tell you what, ever since they brought those in, I tell you, I tell you, the movie cinema experience has gotten absolutely horrible. He's so English that he's racist too. He's like an 1800s Englishman. I say, oh, I I tell you what, the reason why I'm taking the horse and cart down to the cinema is because I have polio and my bones are bent. (laughs) Got bent bones and a monocle. Pip, pip, telly-ho, shall we go to the cinema? I've got polio and I'm going to die. My wife doesn't speak to me because I don't let her. Otherwise, she'll get a furious lashing. That's the only guy that would see that Beatles movie. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all right, with that, guys, I think we're going to get into the miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? If you don't know, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the worst part of the podcast. It's where I answer questions sent in by you guys. If you have any life advice questions, or even if you have an entertaining story you would like to tell me, send it to podcast at loosespears.com. That's podcast at loosespears.com. Um, all right. Disabled kid needs your, vo- uh, needs your advice. Gee, that sounds like fucking every email I get <laughs> from my fans. Disabled kid needs your advice. All right. Uh, Hey, Lou, sorry, this is not a fuck story. I haven't read this one. This is not a fuck story, but I hope you can help me anyway. My name is Ripley. I'm 19 and I have cerebral palsy, which means I'm in a wheelchair. Gee, I I feel a bit guilty for making all those polio bent bone jokes before. Fuck. It's gotten a little bit real now, hasn't it? Sorry, Ripley. I, I, I don't know if you're still listening. You probably fucking shut it off. Wheeled away. My name's Ripley, I'm 19 and I have cerebral palsy, which means I'm in a wheelchair. I would love to go out with my friends more often, but they go out to nightclubs and drink, which is a problem for me. Yeah, I guess you can't drink. For one, I don't like drinking very much. Usually when I go out, I only sit on one or two drinks and I could really do without it. So many jokes are racing through my mind about sitting, but I'm not going to say them. <laughs> Secondly, hey man, this is an equal opportunities podcast, right? I'm going to make fun of every cunt listening to this. Keelan's just gotten shocked he listen to me hear that. Hey, if he's a fan of me, he's going to cop it, all right? It's no slide season, right? Um, secondly, nightclubs aren't really good for wheelchairs. Yeah, no, that would suck, bro. You'd be fucking wheeling over people's toes too. You'd just be, you'd just be cutting circulation off fucking people trying to dance. I mean, but you would be the... Best fist bumper around, bro. Right? Because that's all you can do. So you'd fucking nail it. I suck at fist bumping. I'm too tall and long for it. You would nail that shit, bro. You'd be the best fist bumper around. Dude, you should just cut shapes. You know, that shit. You do that. Um... Secondly, nightclubs aren't good for wheelchairs, so the few times I have gone, I end up sitting around the bar getting hit on by drunk old ladies. Dude! Awesome. And I almost always want to go home straight away. My close friends are aware of this and I do catch up with them from time to time, but they are starting to go to clubs more often. Now, most weekends, I feel like I'm wasting my youth while my friends are creating memories. <laughs> Look, they're not. Okay. I'll read the rest of the email and I'll tell you what I think. I know this is a weird situation, 
but if you could give, please give me some advice. I would appreciate it. Also, I'm excited for a tour. Uh, thanks for booking a wheelchair accessible venue. Luke didn't. Yeah, well, a lot of you guys don't know this about Luke, but he actually hates people in wheelchairs. Like if he sees a man in a wheelchair, I actually have to hold him back from assaulting them. It's crazy. Just the thing he has. <laughs> Just destroying Kidgel's reputation on my podcast. Yeah, look, dude. Okay, I totally get this because I I had a similar thing. I mean, not the the being disabled bit, but the nightclub thing. I would I wouldn't really go to them because I was sober, which is not a disability, but some people treat it like it is, right? So I wouldn't go to nightclubs because I didn't like drinking. I, I didn't do drugs. Uh, I never have, and I never will. Um, so I didn't enjoy nightclubs. And here's the thing, bro. When I was 18 and 19 and all my friends were going to nightclubs, I felt the same way, right? I was like, oh, I'm missing out. They're making memories. So then I started making more of an effort to go to them and I started going to nightclubs. And the reality is, bro, you're right. They're not, they're not, not, they're not boring because you're in a wheelchair and you have cerebral palsy. They're boring because they're fucking shit. Nightclubs aren't fun, dude. You know what's fun? Ecstasy. That's why cunts go because they just pop pills and they go off their fucking head. But you don't want to get into that shit because it lasts for maybe two years and then once you hit year three, you're that creepy old guy in the club losing his hair who has a pill-munching addiction. They suck. Nightclubs aren't fun. They're fun like the first three to five times, but then it just becomes the same shit and you just see all of these people... (laughs) You, it's funny you mentioned that you're wasting, you feel like you're wasting your youth. Nah, dude, they are. Here's what's better than going to a nightclub. Getting a fucking group together and going somewhere where you can actually talk and actually make memories together. Like going to a nightclub where you can't speak, you can't hear each other. The most fun of the night is having pre-drinks and getting in the Uber and being dickheads. And then you get into a fucking line and you hit on girls that don't want anything to do with you. You can't talk to your mates. They're so off their face that even if you do talk to them, they can't understand that you... You can't understand them. They're off their face and they won't even fucking remember it. You see like you're... You feel like that you're missing out on making memories. Bro, they don't remember any of that shit. I would say that like really what you should be doing is just find not every fucking 18, 19 year old goes out to nightclubs, bro. Like that's only a specific sub genre of 18, 19 year olds. There's a bunch of other people that do other shit. There's people that love fucking driving and doing burnouts. There's people that just like going on. That was my thing. I just like going on fucking really long late night drives with people. That was sick. You can do that passenger seat that's what i did you can't drive neither can i bro like that's what i feel like that's what i would instead of trying to force yourself to enjoy something that clearly you just don't why don't you try and find a group of friends that do other things or even get this group of friends to do other things with you right like if if you don't enjoy going to nightclubs are you offering a solution to that problem or are you just not going and not enjoying it you know what i mean why don't you go bowling they got those fucking lame things where you can where you can bowl with the thing that's sweet i don't i mean i'm not the expert on what to do for fun when you're in a wheelchair but i'm sure there's a bunch of shit you know i don't know man i feel like that maybe you're just looking you're you're trying to enjoy something that maybe you just don't like and it's not because you're in a wheelchair it's probably just because nightclubs suck because they do and there's so many people your age that agree with that so that's what i would do man try and do some other shit with your friends um and also, if you're getting hit on by older women, bro, that's not happening to anybody else in that nightclub. So if you're not enjoying that, I think it's because you just don't fucking like nightclubs. Um, that one's too long. What have we got here? Okay, potential friend with benefits. Hey, Lewis, I love your work. I can't wait to see your show in Melbourne. Well, I hope you have tickets because they're going nuts. The first show is almost sold out. Seriously, if fucking 40 people bring one friend, it's gone. So get on that shit now. 
There's this girl that I've met earlier this year, uh, but I've been seeing more recently, and we get along great. Similar sense of humor and can talk about almost anything. Last time we hung out, we got lunch and went back to an empty house at mine. At lunch, we've been talking about past relationships and mentioned and she and mentioned. At lunch, we were talking about past relationships and mentioned. She mentioned that she needs to be single for a bit to work on herself. I get that. I've been there before. However, back at mine, we're cuddled up on the couch watching Netflix. I'm trying to give physical cues like rubbing her leg to take it further without straight up just going for it. This is good. She wasn't responding to it, so I let it go. Later, though, we started talking about sex and what we're into. At this point, I probably sound clueless with women and or a big pussy. As we went on, I was about to go for it, but family came back, so I drove her home soon after. After, I kicked myself for not making the move. We were messaging that night about types of kinks, and she mentioned that you need to do it with someone you trust so no one gets hurt. Yeah, she's dropping some big clues, bro. I really want to try this shit because there's not exactly an abundance of opportunities for this type of thing. I get the impression that she's interested but doesn't want a relationship at this point, but I thought about a relationship with her. I'm not sure I want that kind of stress in my life right now. Friends with benefits type situation seems almost ideal right now. I've never had one before and I want to be able to go about it the right way without anyone getting hurt. Am I really deep in the friend zone without realizing it or does she just want me to be an alpha about it? Advice is much appreciated. See you at the show. Have a shit one. Yeah, dude, here's the thing. She's dropping big hints. Women don't, women hit on you Women don't make the move. This is how women make their move, right? They make their move by putting themselves in the position for you to make a move, right? Not many girls are forward with this type of stuff, but they do make it easy for you to make the move and then they will reciprocate, right? They don't go, hey, I want you to fuck me. They they just drop hints like talking about what they're into. Like that kind of shit seems like she's dropping hints. However, she's obviously cautious because she doesn't want a relationship So she's worried about that happening. So what you need to do is literally have the conversation. All this kind of stuff happens with open communication. If you want a friends with benefits scenario, you need to say, hey, I've been thinking about all this stuff we've been talking about uh, with with sex and shit like that. It sounds like we're pretty similar. Do you want to try a friends with benefits scenario? I don't want to I don't really want a relationship. You don't really want a relationship, but I'm attracted to you and I get the same vibe from you. Why don't we try this? What do you think? Totally cool if not. And then hopefully she'll go, yeah, let's give it a go. And then here's the thing. You need to abide by the ground rules that both of you set because otherwise it will get messy. If you really don't want a relationship, you really need to not go into that. That's what I would recommend, man. I need You just need to have the honest conversation. Next time you're in person, don't do it over messenger like a pussy. Do it in person. When you're alone and when, when there's an opportunity for you to, guys, you know, to have sex, when, when you're alone, when no one's coming home for a while, instead of just rubbing her leg and then doing nothing, you know, put your hand on her leg. If she, if she you know, doesn't move away or if she doesn't act weird, cool have the conversation. Hey, I think you're really attractive. Uh, I've been getting vibes from you. Am I right? Yes? No? Well, I know that you don't want a relationship. Neither do I. Why don't we try a friends with benefits situation and see how it goes? And then hopefully she'll say yes. And if she does, go for it, man. If she says no, definitely don't. (laughs) But have the conversation. That's how you do it without being a pussy. You know what I mean? Because it is a... It is that hard thing when you're a man, you need to you need to find the line between being forward and not being too forward because that is our role, you know? We have to we have to make it happen without forcing it to happen. That's the fucking line that 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 men have to tread. Uh, and it's a big responsibility because obviously a lot of cunts, Jeffrey Epstein, they tread that line too far. They go over the line. They fucking jump in on a motorbike. <laughs> so you need to fit, you need to have an honest conversation with her and figure it out. And uh, that's what I would do. So I hope that helps, man. Give me an update with uh, with how it goes. And uh, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there because I need to go. I've been filming for fucking way too long today. I'm losing my voice. So that's the end of the podcast, guys. I'm going to be back next Sunday with a uh, much more collected uh, podcast where I don't yell about pedophiles for 20 minutes. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know, it was episode 69. 
29. You've got to get a little bit sexual, don't you? Anyway, um, hope Jeffrey Epstein burns in hell. That's the end of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Give me a subscribe on iTunes. Make sure you grab tickets to No Slide Season. They're going quick, especially if you're in Melbourne. All right? I'll see you guys next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one. See ya.